Hello, I'm Colin Thompson. Welcome to the next video in our COVID coaching series. In this series, myself and other life coaches provide tips and insights on how you and your family can best make it through the coronavirus outbreak in your city. I'm located here in Shanghai, China. Most of our coaches are also located in various parts of China. We also, though, have coaches located in North America, South America, and Europe. And what this does, it allows the coaches from China, like myself, to provide you with insights and tips on how we made it through right now in China. We're not out of the woods yet, but we are starting to see the sun again. And also from coaches who are actually going through what you're going through in, in, in North America, South America, and Europe. We again hope these tips will provide you and your family with some ideas on how to best protect yourself. In, today, in today's episode, we have Coach Kanisha Berry, who is usually located in Beijing, China, but due to being impacted by the outbreak, she had returned home to North Carolina. She'll share with us what she did when she initially noticed that the mindset and the energy of her family was starting to go down. She'll also share with you a conversation she had and tips that, that she was giving her mother to help her mother understand who was the elder person, understand the importance of protecting herself through the coronavirus outbreak. So again, we hope that you guys can really take some of these tips and, and implement them within your families. So Coach Kanisha Berry, welcome back to our COVID Coaches video series. Glad to have you back. The first video we did was wonderful, was great. Got a lot of positive feedback from that video. Uh, so here we are again. And today we're talking about a, a topic that is a little more, I want to a little more personal for me. Um, as, as I mentioned, we are hopefully at the end of, knock on wood, at the end of our COVID outbreak time here. And mm -hmm. as I look back, um, for me, it was very important that when I look back on this time, I had some positive things to take out, take away from it. I don't want us to look back and have all the negative memories. So, and you mentioned this, it was very important for us to have a purpose for this time, uh, not just going through it, striving, thriving while we're going through it, having some projects, maybe learning some new things, um, really taking, I know we have a lot of, I don't say negativity, but a lot of things taking place that can bring our emotions down. So it's very important that we have things that balance us out, so to speak. A lot of times, just, just being busy, quite frankly, does help. So today we want to talk about, um, as you mentioned, having a purpose for this time. So share with us, first of all, introduce yourself again, and please share with us some things or an idea that you and your family have done to really not just go through this time, but make this time somewhat valuable. So again, I'm Kenesha Berry. I'm a relationship life coach. The relationship I typically help my clients with is the one they're having with themselves so that they can have better relationships with other people. Um, and so for me, anytime there's a transition in my life, the new year, we're moving, um, I'm about to be faced with something I hadn't planned like this virus, I typically bring the family together and I said, okay, what are we gonna do? What is your vision, is what I usually say, for this time? What purpose are you gonna create out of this time? Um, and it, it really stems, Colin, from because I read this um, quote, actually I heard this preacher say this, she said that, the lonely, the, that loneliness wasn't the absence of people, it was the absence of purpose. purpose. And coming from a person who used to really struggle with feeling lonely all the time, that really spoke to me. Mm. So it, gave, it really, put inside of me the intention of like being purposeful every single time, all the time. And so definitely, yeah, we have this virus going on. We're, you know, so-called stuck in the house. For some of us, it could be almost like a retreat because I find that particularly in America, um, we go so hard with work. You know, we are working 50, 60 hours, some people. So this could be a time of retreat. And I also am fully aware that most people I talk to, they have all of these dreams and things they want to do, like write a book. Right. or um, start a business, uh, but they don't have time. That's what they say. Well, but I, I want to do all these things, but I don't have time. Well, now you do. Yeah, now so you have time to get things started. You have time to get things started. And so it's not even about what you can't do outside. There's so much you can still do in your home with the internet. Um, definitely setting a vision, setting a purpose for this time. If you're going to write a book, you can start right, you know, right at home on your computer, on your laptop now. You can start like old fashioned, write it if you need to. 
um, if you want to decide during this time that you're going to read those books you've always wished you had time to read. Now's the time. But I think it's really important that we be intentional mm. about picking a project. Maybe it's once a week, once a month that we're going to accomplish so that at the end of this time, we have a reason to celebrate and we can go back and look back and say, but well, this wasn't what I expected at all. This wasn't what I wanted to happen in my life. But because it did, I was able to finally start my book, finally like do the research and figure out what it takes to start my business. I actually have a business plan now. You know, I've, right. I've contacted some people and learn because everybody's home. Everybody's so home. now you don't have to worry about bothering. I, wanna, I, would, I would have called you, but I was worried I would be bothering you. You're not bothering anybody now. You know, that's, that's very important. I want to go back to what you said, being intentional. Yeah. And as I look back at the time, not only myself and my family spent here, but looking at some people I've talked to as well, we talked about what we're doing to stay busy. And we're not talking about stay busy stuff. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Um, my wife and I went through, we, we, we um, went through our binge watching episodes. We went through a hot thing. We went through a season of Game of, Game of Thrones in one day, right? That's wow. a lot of watching, right? That's, I mean, yeah. I, in one day, that's a lot of watching of, of a series. I felt okay at the end, but I also cleaned out my closet. And right now, I have the cleanest closets in Shanghai. <laughs> I felt much better at the end of cleaning out the closet than I did watching watching a TV series. So we're not talking about just staying busy. And this space for, for doing activities just to take a mental break and whatnot, we're talking about having a purpose, perhaps online education. So is there a difference between, well, I'm sure there is, but help us to talk about staying busy and really having a purposeful task. So a lot of times people talk about the difference between just that being busy and being productive. Okay. So a lot of times if you have a, a purpose for something that you're being purposeful about, and I always say, make sure that purpose has something to do with your dream. Okay. Even if it's the smallest of things, right? Even like, again, even if it's the start, um, I hear it. I think life make it so that we're too busy, you know, we're, we're chasing um, the money we need it to pay for our bills. We're just living at such a level. But all of us had these things that we wanted to do that if we had the time, if we had the money, we would do it. Now is that time to attach purpose to that. And so maybe you can't visit Paris right now. Like maybe you, you always want, dream of traveling and going yeah. to Paris. Here's a wonderful thing. Airline tickets are so cheap now. And now a lot of these, <laughs> right? Yeah. So a lot of these airlines are saying, hey, if you buy the ticket today, you can have a whole year to change it. So you can look into that. So even if you can't go to Paris right now, this is your time to look into it. Find out, do if I really want to go to Paris, what does that mean? How much does it cost? Where would I stay? Now is the time to really think about those dreams that you've always had and start creating a plan for it. And I was, I was sharing with you earlier, a friend of mine, I thought this was a great idea. Um, she and her family, they have a jar. They have a, like a, a big glass jar. And whenever they sit around and they think, oh, I wish I could go to this store. I wish we could go to Disneyland because they literally just can't right now. They put it all in the jar. So that when life gets back to normal, they can start. And then we do what we do. We start forgetting our dreams or we don't make time for it. And we just, oh, it's Saturday, I'm bored. You go in that jar. Right. That during the time when you couldn't go do stuff, and now, you go in that car and you say, "Wow, I said I was going to go thrifting. I'm but, going thrifting." You better, today. You, you better, you better go do it. I tell you, that's a good yeah. idea. And and now, you know, I have my life coaching business in my heart. I'm a motivator, so I do a lot of motivational speaking. So now I'm going into my motivational side a little bit yeah. because the, the key here is um, we have no idea how long we'll be under homestay. Again, I'm not saying lockdown, okay? Let's change, let's change the context of it. We're not on lockdown. We are on homestay or a long-term long -term honeymoon. Have you want to yeah. talk about it, right? <laughs> you want to talk about it. But the key is because we have no idea how long we'll be living under these restrictions, the key here is starting, right? Starting. Don't worry about can you finish these things in time. Start working on your passion. Start doing something you're passionate about. Start going back to your dream. Take about 30 minutes and brainstorm some things that you always wanted to do, but you never thought you'd have time to do it, or, or you just gave up on them. Write those yeah. things down. Start something. Don't worry about when you're going to finish, because if you're able to do these things during this time, 
you'll find that if these were things that you're very passionate about, it'll carry over. Once the school's open, once you're back to work, you will find some time, maybe not as much time as you have to spend on it now, but you'll still be more consistent. And it helps you get back into that, I can really achieve what I want to achieve mindset. So don't worry about um, about finishing. The key here is taking those first two steps. I can tell you, nobody that has ever reached their goal has ever done so without taking the first step, right? Right. So it's very important. To, to get started here. As you mentioned, online online education, and right now there are a lot of organizations offering free online courses. People yeah. are thinking about what they want to, to study and go for. And I think this is very important because every hour we take away from watching the news, every hour we take away from binge watching a DVD series, and we, we use that to, to, to learn something or go for our passion, it's like we're pumping pumping our bodies up with positive energy and yeah. we need to do, do more of that yeah and it gives you something to look forward to when mm. you wake up in the morning um so like one of our running jokes here in the house is my husband will say well don't you i'm i'm back in grad i've decided to go to grad school i don't know what i was thinking but i did <laughs> um, and so he'll say don't you have a paper i said listen i have 24 hours now I can pick any of these 24 hours. <laughs> so if I feel like getting up at 2, 3 in the morning, it's okay. Because guess what? I don't have to go to work tomorrow morning right. at 7 or 8 in the morning. So you just, you really do have time. And, and like you said, a lot of us take time and we binge watch. Like everybody right now is talking about some show on Netflix that I'm even curious about. I don't have time to watch it. Um, some tiger show. But instead of taking your whole day to do that, particularly creatives, right? One of the things I challenged my daughter was she's a writer. I'm like, if you're going to watch a movie, you need to write me a movie. Mm. Like, where's your script? Right. Because you say you want to write. Let's get to writing. So I'm always pushing them towards purpose. My, my son, um, I'm pushing him to tutor. It's like, you need to just get comfortable tutoring online because nobody can come and sit across from you. But let's do that. And so we put out flyers. So the time is purposeful. So that even the young people, they don't get lonely or bored because they they have something to look yeah. forward to yeah, they have to be up they have something to do yeah now, so andre you, you know he's still busy because he get he gets to work he's just right. teaching online i want to bring us back to um what families are going through right now and yeah. and how we can because again perhaps you and i um who are wired a little different we'll find ways to do these things but yeah. again it's at the household it's not just us it's us and our families and we want to make sure that everybody in our house is doing positive things. How would you, uh, I know in your house, you have a very great atmosphere and environment for these discussions, but you know, imagine for a moment that we don't have that great environment for openness. How would you, uh, how would you recommend or what tips can you give to families who want to sort of, to parents who want to sort of um, share the idea of, of, uh, of having purpose during this time with their spouses, with their partners, with their family, um, when people in the household are feeling have fear, have anxiety, aren't in a positive mindset, how can we sort of bring this up without pushing them and that they, they, they feel like they're being forced to do something they, that they may not be comfortable or see the value in yet? So one of the things I saw, and I'll be honest with you, I saw this on with Jada and Will Smith. Um, they create a safe space for their kids. From and they said they've been doing this since they was little. And the way they open the safe space is that they allow their children to say a curse word. And so, (laughs) (laughs) what we're saying is, at this time in this moment, it is completely safe for you to say what you need to say to express the way you need to express. So we're going to open it by allowing you to say a curse word, which is not normal. And in this space, you don't even get recommended for it. That's, that's kind of the verification that yes, this is a safe place. So if you're in a family where maybe you're not used to, you know, you're not really super close and you're not used to spending this much time together. You're not used to communicating and talking, start by creating a safe space. And, and one that's going to take some personal control, Right. You know, some emotional control where you're like, you choose not to react to the thing the person says. And you just hear, because I find a lot of times when people stop talking to each other, um, I hear this a lot. It blows my mind when I hear parents say to me, when I tell them things my children tell me, 
um, I've had moms say to me, how old are your children? I'm like, well, 17 and 15. They're like, they still talk to you? Yes. And they tell me stuff that I be thinking like, I can't believe you just told me that I'm your mom. Right. <laughs> but it's because they, they have a safe space. Mm-hmm. There's no judgment. You know, it's just, I try to offer guidance. And so I just encourage parents that yeah. you want to, particularly when they're older, right? right? You go from parenting to, to coaching. You really should. When your children are little kids, you're parenting. By right. time they hit about 12, you should be coaching. Right. Meaning that you put inside of them everything, instill your values, you instill, you know, what is important to you as a family. And by 12, either they, they have it or they're not going to have it, but you're not going to stop parenting at 12. Right. And I want to jump in here because I want to, yeah. look, in, in environments, some environments, we haven't done that. Okay, we don't have that. How do we, how do we, I don't want to say manufacture, but how do we sort of create a temporary safe space in the context? We haven't had that, we haven't had that experience before. And again, the purpose is to, uh, is to motivate our family to have a purpose during this time. If we haven't had that, how do we, I don't say instantly, but how do we get it during this period? It's going to, it's gonna, this is what I call, so this is where it takes a hero of the family. It's got to be a hero. And so what the hero does is the hero is going to show up and say, listen, I know this is not comfortable for us. I know this is not how we normally do things, but I want us to start building the kind of family and relationship because we're here now. We have to be together. And so instead of us all being off in our separate rooms and spending the next maybe even month or two months like that, let's use this time. So let the hero, so somebody in the family has to choose to be the hero. And so the hero has to do their inner work, do their emotional work, where they say, you know, I'm not going to take everything personal. I'm going to be real honest and say, I know that my family, we don't communicate well. We, you know, I've let this go on too long. Be the hero by just saying, okay, I accept responsibility that I let this happen for too long. But right now I want to change it. So then start asking the questions, not saying, this is what we're going to do. What do we have to do? Okay. And one of the tools that I use with my clients is I say, and this is, this is, again, this is being the hero and this is being bold. Right now, on a scale of one to 10, where would you say our family is? Wow. Right? And allow people to answer the question without judgment, without defense. Don't defend. Don't, but this, don't defend. Right, Just right. hear. So if they say a three, be, accept the three. And then your question is, okay. what can we do as a family to get to 10? To get to ten, yeah, yeah, and then allow everybody to maybe write down some ideas of what they think it would take to be a ten, and in that again, the hero, somebody has to be the mature, emotionally mature one, where they don't go into defense mode. Well, I do talk to you. I do have dinner with you. I no, it's right. oh, you, you if you write down have dinner together, don't defend that why you haven't had dinner. Just say okay, let's plan. On these days, we're going to have dinner. Right. Now, I think the exercise is very powerful. What's important there is, as you mentioned, if not, when we have that safe place and opening, it's not an opportunity to criticize people, to say, well, let me tell you what I've been thinking about for, no, it's not the opportunity. It's really where, as you mentioned, people can, can, can share. And we do that as well um, in, with my clients. Um, and what, what I coach them to do is, when somebody shares, you don't have the opportunity to try to explain. Right? right, meaning if I want more dinners, and somebody says, "Well, we have five, they're not enough." No, 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 no. I'm just sharing how I feel. Right. Yeah. So I think it's important there, and I think that, that that'll be, I think it'll be very challenging, right? Because in the beginning, there may be some trust issues, but the more yeah. people share, the more the hero um, shares and and sort of manages and facilitates that session. I think that will be very very beneficial. Um, again, we have got to we have got to find ways. Of making sure that we're taking care of the one environment we can control and that's inside the house during this COVID period and there's two things we can control two things we must control the first one well not and this is not in order of importance okay even though the only two things but one is protecting our household from bringing the virus back inside yes. the second one is managing the virus that's already inside the house and that's negativity coming from the media, our fears. Every day now, we hear about people um, who are sick and who are dying. Go back, go back when this was in China, it was like eight degrees of separation, meaning 
you really didn't know anybody who was who was sick. You may have heard a story about somebody, but now in the U.S., I guarantee you, most people have probably three degrees of separation from somebody who's sick, somebody who's dying, which is very sad. And and we know that during this time, the, what's going to get us through this is that family, is that core of people inside that household. So before we close, um, what's your last message here? Um, knowing again that we have a family going through a very tough time and we have a lot of time on our hands inside the household and we want to make sure that people have a purpose um, please share with us your last message and i, I want this message to, to make somebody say you know what i'm gonna get up and go do something right now so make it powerful yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what i would strongly encourage is like feel what you feel okay like i don't encourage stuffing emotions but once you get over that, you can't stay in that emotional state of sadness, anger, frustrated, whatever that is. But then get intentional about setting a purpose for this time. Whatever that is, write the book. Um, reach out to people you haven't talked to in a long time. All the things you used to think if I had time, set intention and do it now. Second thing, if it's a family situation where it's not the, quite the family you want, listen, people are dying. Like people are dying every day. People are losing loved ones every day. Now is the time to mend fences, to forgive, and somebody in the household just be the hero. Like who, whoever's watching this video, I'm begging you, be the hero in your family. And allow yourself to whatever the thoughts, beliefs, and the emotions that you're carrying about they don't understand you, let that go to begin to create an environment of safety where your family can come back together because you're all you have. Yeah. So create, you know, create that purpose, be the hero, and then be about the business of building together, like building friendships, love, and, and whatever, you, maybe your purpose is just that. Maybe your purpose is this is our time as a family to get back to get back. being loving, kind, and supportive for one another. Yeah, and I like what you said, now the time to mend fences, and I wanna add, Look, look, families, people watching this, if you can only um, take a time out, meaning if you can only improve your relationship with your family for this time period, start there, okay? Yeah. Have an agreement that we, while we're in the house together, while we're doing this, we will do our best. Once the, the, the world opens back up, hopefully you'll want to maintain, but whatever. But for now, try to mend those fences. So, so Coach Keisha, how can folks get a hold of you? So you can reach me at um, verythoughtfullife.com. That's my website. You can go up there, at a piece will pop up, and you can send me an email. Um, you can also find me on YouTube and on Facebook. So my name is Kenesha Berry, and my coaching business is verythoughtfullife.com. Great. Kenesha, we'll see you again in a few more episodes. Thanks for your great message, as always. And I think, again, we're doing our part on the backside. Um, and I want to give a shout-out to all the front lines the medical workers, the people who must stay working in contact. You know, we really hope, hope you guys are, are doing great. And we hope your families are doing great also, knowing that you're putting yourself in harm's, harm's way. We're trying to do what we can, the COVID coaches, doing what we can to help folks on the backside inside the house. Guys, any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out. You should be seeing the information on the screen. Again, we hope you guys, we wish you guys the best of luck during this time. And don't go through this alone, even if you are alone. Okay? Yes. Yeah.